everybody, Rubia Sutton here. I am gonna talk to you guys about entrepreneurship today, um, a little bit about my journey, uh, which we've already talked about, but more honing in on kind of what I do as an entrepreneur or business owner uh, to keep myself sane and balanced. An entrepreneur to me is somebody who is a creative at heart, wants to create something and impact a segment, the world, a segment of people, uh, what have you, whatever their kind of market is, um, and can't handle being boxed in uh, to somebody else's culture or being told that they can't think out of outside of the box. Uh, for me, uh, I hate the box. I don't want to be in the box. I don't like no. I don't like can't. I want to be as free as possible and be able to think as freely as possible. Um, and I want everybody around me to have the same access. Um, I think that, you know, yes, everybody right now is, is all about kind of figuring out whether they can be an entrepreneur and run a business. Um, and, and I think it's also important to point out that there's different modes of being a business owner. You know, there is the business owner who um, is a sole proprietor and, um, never and, and doesn't want to grow their business to you know this enormous thing with a bunch of employees uh, provides a service or a product makes enough money to be able to support their lifestyle maybe takes off you know a couple months off the out of the year and they're doing it and I think uh, but they're able to be creative and in those time in the time that they're off uh, they're rejuvenating, recharging, and kind of figuring out what their next thing is gonna be. Um, and that's what's important to them, right? And I think that's just as much of an entrepreneur as the person who's building the $150 million, a billion dollar business with you know, thousands of employees and uh, working you know, 16, 17, 18 hours a day. Um, for me, I try to find a balance you know, in all of that. I'm not going to take off, you know, a couple of months, but I do make sure that I'm making time to give myself uh, access to recharge. I, you know, meditate on a daily basis, uh, sometimes multiple times a day, but definitely like in the morning, kind of setting the tone for the day. I'm big into using affirmations. So, you know, uh, what is possible for me that day? Who could I meet that day? What business opportunities can I close? Um, what impact can I have in the world? Who can I help? Who can help me? Those kind of things. And I also, you know, if I'm having uh, what I feel like is an incredibly long day or it's super stressful, I will, you know, take 20 minutes at three o'clock, two o'clock in the middle of the day and go do some more meditation or just find some space where no one is pulling at me so that I can just be alone with my thoughts and re-categorize uh, and prioritize what I need to do so that I can be efficient the rest of the day. Um, I think, you know, making time to see my family, my children, my husband uh, in the evening, support their activities uh, right now is super important for me. They, I've only got like two years left while they're in the house and I wanna make sure that I'm spending as much time as I can with them uh, whether they want that or not. And then I am, uh, you know, making sure that I am, uh, not necessarily reading. I'm not a big reader because I read, I've been reading for a living in terms of the, uh, services that I've provided as a contract person and I'm in the car a lot. So I do a lot of, you know, audible books on tape and just kind of listening to professional development and listening to, the thought leaders uh, that are out there right now, you know, talking about empathy and love and how to infuse that in your business and being kind and, um, and you know, using meditation to kind of get clear and spirituality and all of those kinds of things. So you've um, talked to us a lot about what you do as an entrepreneur and help what keeps you balanced. So do you feel that anybody can be an entrepreneur or, is, or are you just born to be an entrepreneur? So this goes to the question of what about that person at work right now who hates their job, they don't feel like they make enough money, they're not getting the validation that they think, you know, that they deserve. Are they an entrepreneur? Are those characteristics of an entrepreneur? Um, well, I think <laughs> that, 
that can be looked at a couple of different ways, right? The person that's sitting at their job being and is miserable and thinks that they're being underpaid and doesn't like the culture and doesn't fit in, those are definitely those definitely could be characteristics of an entrepreneur, but it could just be characteristics that the person needs to go empower themselves to leave and find a different position. For me, entrepreneurship is about do you have the tenacity to go out and build something on your own, however small or big that is, to support yourself, your family, your employees if you have them and want them, uh, and, and maintain that financial um, balance for everybody and then build a culture and focus on your customers and all of those things. Again, I feel like there's a lot of uh, talk in entrepreneurship around building this behemoth thing, but there are plenty of entrepreneurs that are a one man, one woman show that don't want to have a bunch of employees, don't want to build it past whatever they are comfortable with monetarily. They are just as much of an entrepreneur as I or anybody else who has a larger company and has employees. They just have a different focus. And um, they could still be changing the world. They could, they're still impacting their customer segment. Uh, they're still impacting the people, you know, their partnerships and, and whoever they're kind of dealing with on a daily basis who's in their circle. They just may not have the objective to go and do something on a large scale. And I think that that person is just as much of an entrepreneur as anybody else who's, you know, making millions of dollars running a business. So the use of the word ten tenacity, is tenacity something you're born with or is that something that you can... Um, achieve over time and how do you achieve that or is it possible I mean I definitely think people are born there are different people who have different personality traits and I think tenacity is built into some people more than others but I think anybody can be tenacious if you decide that this is something you want to go after you come up with a goal and then you back into it what do you need to do what are those action steps that you need to take to get to that goal and then you break that down in chunks over time, you know, what do you need to do this week? What do you need to do this month? What do you need to do this year? What do you need to do today to get to that goal? That's part of being tenacious. I think the characteristic that is imbued on entrepreneurs, even more than tenacity is resilience, right? Being able to get up, fail, get up again and keep going and, and not taking no for an answer and not and obviously people are going to get discouraged at different points, but not letting that prevent them from continuing to build and grow and keep their eye on the prize. I think that is uh, is a personality trait, again, that people are born with, but with the right team and the right culture around you, I think anybody could be, you know, resilient and you won't know until you, you know, kind of try. I think the difference is, if you're really asking me what the difference is between an entrepreneur and somebody who is happy being an employee of somebody else is, you know, there are people who have vision and and I would call who are creatives and can uh, take it, an idea and think about it strategically, how it's going to affect the end consumer. And then there are people who are executors or implementers of those things and you need both to run a business. And so for me, the people who are happy working for other people are the ones who are implementing. They don't have the original ideas themselves, but they can take your idea and they can, you know, man help you manifest it, but also make it, uh, take it to scale and just blow it out of the water by thinking about it different ways. And so again, you need both people, um, but I don't think anybody is happy when they're in a fucked up situation where they have a culture where it's a bunch of toxicity and people yelling and being unfair and you know that happens everywhere so the question is how do you monetize your once you've identified what your one or many passions are how do you just how do you figure out whether you can actually make money at it and you know the great thing is which we didn't have when you know I was younger is you have the internet I mean, we have the internet, but not to the effect that you have it today, right? It wasn't as mature. You can literally go on Google and Google your passion and see whether there are businesses, where those businesses are located, and there's plenty of places that you can go to do research and figure out whether 
you know, if you're, if your passion is to make fake flower arrangements, where are, you know, what are those top five, 10 businesses doing? Who are they selling to? Uh, where are they located? You know, are they all in one region? Are they spread across the world? Are the customers spread across the world? Um, the Small Business Administration has great tools uh, and research that you could do on all businesses in the U.S. Um, but really, you could just type in like, you know, fake flower arrangement producer, manufacturer, and it would it would tell you, you would, you would have a great start right there. Um, so that's, to me, is easier than people make it. Um, and then I think the other way to think about it is like, you know, would you buy it? Is it, it, once you figure out what your passion is, is it something you would buy? Is it something that you could just pull the people that are in your favorites in your phone list and see whether it's something they would purchase? Um, and, you know, obviously you don't want people like lying to you. So you tell them to tell you for real, but there's, there's a number of easy ways for you to get the market research and determine whether, uh, your idea is viable or not. Okay. So I've decided now I'm going to, my passion is to sell fake flowers. How long should I sell them and, 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 and when should I expect the return? So I think you, you know, everybody should put a forecast together, but it needs to be realistic. And the first year that you're in business, it's hard to do because you don't have any historical data to go after, right? So you're out there, you're, you're pounding the pavement, you're trying to figure out how you can get in, fit in, and sell. And uh, I think people underestimate how long it takes to build something of significance. So if you really want to build that bigger business with a bunch of employees and the infrastructure, uh, and impact the world more significantly, it is going to take years, right, for you to get to where you want to be. I'm eight and a half years into this business and we're just starting to get to a place where I feel good, like, oh my God, all of the work that we've done over these last eight and a half years is finally starting to catch up. All the seeds that we've planted, you know, we're, we're starting this decline, right, of scale, which I want, um, but that's eight and a half years in, right? And obviously, like, there's been tons of things, trials and tribulations that we go up, that have happened, learning experiences and things like that, that are all going to happen to you. But I think you've got to, you know, have a, a five-year plan. You've got to really look at things strategically and figure out who you're going to sell to, how you're going to get it to them, who's your competition, to, and how are you going to compete with them? Are you competing with them because yours is the best thing since sliced bread and you're doing something super unique that nobody else is doing in the fake flower business? Or are you undercutting them, you know, by 30% because you have access to something in the pipeline of delivery that they don't, you know, what are you doing to make yourself stand out? And then, uh, you know, after a year or two, you've got some good historical data that you can then measure your progress and look, you know, identify what, changes, gaps that you need to make um, in your business. But definitely you can't run a business for a couple of years and think you're going to be a millionaire and then give up. Like it doesn't work like that. So if I'm a brand new entrepreneur, I'm going to start my own business. What are some pitfalls you tell me to be aware of and to avoid that you've made this mistake that you've made and you want to make sure that next person behind you does not make it? All right, so when you first start a business, a couple of pitfalls that I've, you know, even done myself uh, that I would, that I do tell people, you know, try to counsel people to avoid is you want to have a team of people that you can rely on. And whether you're starting out and you don't, if you don't have any capital, then maybe those people are friends and family that uh, believe in you and want to help you, uh, but that are make up for the characteristics that you don't have. So if you're the ideas person, you need somebody who's the details person, right? Which is polar opposite. Most people who are the ideas people like me hate details. And so anytime you are being bogged down with a bunch of details, you're not going to be happy. So you need somebody there who can uh, pick up the slack and just bring things to you uh, you know, maybe once a month instead of you having to like perform those duties every day. Um, if you do have capital, then obviously you need to hire a team of people who have round out your characteristics and abilities and the things that you want to focus on. 
Um, I think the other thing is like, you know, you need access to a good CPA slash accountant, bookkeeper, you know, somebody who can run your numbers for you and, and file your taxes. You need to have access to uh, a lawyer, contracts person, and those, you know, people you can have uh, some kind of retainer thing built up with them where you're only accessing them if you need them, but you need to have them identified. Like, don't wait until you get into a situation where you need a lawyer to then try to find one. Go talk to some and figure out one that you're comfortable with and then have that person kind of on standby when and if you need them. Um, a marketing person, and that is, you know, traditional marketing as well as website, social media, branding stuff. It's critical in today's, you know, business uh, world and um, and then somebody if you're not good at strategy I think the other thing is you need somebody who's good at strategy who can work with you to outline the steps that you're going to take over the next year or two years three years five years and and kind of putting that plan together so the um, a question I want to add on to that with the strategy is what does the strategy look like to you what do you, when you say strategy you hear that word a lot you need to have someone to help you with the strategy but can you talk us through what that looks like with you, a strategy session or just a strategy in general? So when I say strategy, I mean your game plan. You know, what what are you, what is your end goal? Like, what is your mission? Uh, what is the goal that you have? What are the action steps you're going to take to get there? What people do you need to make that happen inside and outside of your organization? What tools, so software, hardware, other that you need to make those action steps are reality to get to your mission or goal. Um, that to me is really the plan. I kind of think strategically in, in puzzle pieces. So when I'm thinking of a new idea, I automatically start seeing, it's like a catwalk of, it's like a sidewalk of things that I need to happen to make, I need to occur to make that idea a reality and I'll see things 15 20 50 steps out and I think a lot of people don't they see one or two steps out that I consider a gift that I have I'm able to see it in my brain so can any concluding thoughts about entrepreneurship is it something that anyone has access to yes I believe that entrepreneurship is something that everybody has access to and in this day and time there are just so many ways that you can start a business and I think that you know to me it's the alternative of what we have been prescribed which is you know go to school graduate go to more school graduate maybe get a job maybe go to more school then get a job and you really have no skills in that job in, unless you're in you know, one of very few um, majors. And so then you're learning things kind of newly. And if you don't have a good leader uh, or manager showing you the skills, soft skills or technical skills, life skills, then you are learning things the wrong way. Uh, and if you are in tune with yourself, then you know they don't feel right, but you might not have anywhere else to go get those skills. And so why not take that energy uh, as an alternate path, not rack up those loans if that's not something that you want to do, and go start a flipping business, go start a fake flower business, go f start a food truck. There are, lot, there are just like so many things that people can do these days that, like I said, you could be a one woman band and start up a business that you're doing from home, still have, you know, a life, still have your family, take months off. There's just so many things that you can do. If the end goal of you going through, you know, call the, the traditional path of college is to be able to get a job, to be able to take care of yourself, you could be starting that when you're in high school and proving to yourself, your parents, and everybody else by the time you get out of high school that you're already taking care of yourself. And then if you want to go to college, go. I'm not, I'm not saying that nobody should go to college. I'm just saying there needs to be a, a diff, there needs to be options. I like options, right? Because I don't like a box. I don't like no, I don't like can't. So give me options. One option is people that really want to go to college, go. One option is you could start a business. One option is you could just go get trained in skills that are needed today like coding and programming and go work 
uh, as an employee, and then if you have the desire to go start a job, um, start a business, or go to college later, you can, but there's nothing prohibiting you from doing the other two, and this can't be the only option. Thanks, guys, for watching um, this discussion about entrepreneurship. I would love to hear what you guys uh, have to say, um, what your thoughts are around options, going to college, starting a business, getting a job right, right after you graduate, and just kind of what entrepreneurship means in general, uh, dissuading you from believing that it has to be this, you're building a multi-million dollar company and that there's other ways to be entrepreneurs. So would love to hear your thoughts. I uh, would love for you guys to subscribe and uh, follow me. Thanks.